big ass amp. Welcome to Amp Test Tuesday. As always, let's see what it says in the book. Let's put this thing to the test. Keep in mind when you're watching this video that my battery bank is not big enough for this T4000BD. It's just big enough to get a pretty good idea of what it could do, but three 14 volt batteries, and they're not very big 14 volt batteries on an amplifier that big, um, well, it, it's gonna pull the batteries down some. So the whole point of the AD1 is to find out whether or not the amp can make its power, but you still have to feed the amp the power to make its power. But this will still be a fun little test. Of course, the ideal situation would be to have it in your car with a high output alternator hooked up and maybe a couple of batteries. But that's not the case here. It's on a test bench with three batteries with a 10 amp charger, keeping them charged up in between rounds. So let's go ahead and throw this amp on there and see what kind of power it can put out. All right, so it's about 120 watts short of 4,000 watts in certified mode. A certified mode is a really hard test, and that's only three 14 volt batteries at the bottom down there. So let's do the uncertified, and let's do the dynamic RMS and see how it does with a little bit less load on the batteries. So if I can keep that voltage up, this thing has potential to do exactly what it usually says in the birth sheet. Anywhere from 4300 to 4800 or so. So not so bad. Let's put this thing on dynamic burst RMS and see how it would act in your car with music playing rather than a 15 second pure torture sine wave like this test is doing. So let's see. As you can see, dynamic burst is a little easier on the batteries because it's not a solid sine wave. And when you can keep your voltage up, you can expect more power to come out of the amp. 